this part is going to be very easy. Um, we're going to be looking at adding and subtracting functions uh, and just the different ways that you can um, denote this so that you, you actually like know what to do when you see something like this. It's very, very simple. So the first thing that we're going to look at is given some function f of x and some function g of x, uh, this notation, f plus g of x, that's how you say that, is the same thing as taking those functions and adding them together. So that all that means is take the functions and add them together. So that's, oh, that, I mean, we're halfway done. We're actually more than halfway done. This is really, it's just introducing this notation if you haven't seen it before. So that's one way to write addition. Uh, and then subtraction is a similar case. So we have all the same things for f minus g of x. Uh, something that people always miss when you have two things. Uh, and it's not just with this type of like problem. When, whenever you're trying to subtract functions, a lot of people always forget to put parentheses around the second function when they're subtracting uh, because we want to subtract the whole entire thing, not just the first term of the whole entire thing. Uh, so let's just take a look at some examples and you'll see how simple this is. It's really just clearing up some notation. So we're given two functions, f of x, which is this. It's a cubic function. And g of x, which is a quadratic. And we're supposed to find what happens, uh, what, what do we get when we take f of x and we subtract g of x from that. So f uh, minus g of x, that's, that's what we're finding out right now. Uh, all that means is take these two and subtract them. This is what I mean, though, by um, putting the second one in parentheses. So first I'm going to just write down uh, f of x, and then I want to subtract g of x, but here's, here's what I mean by putting in parentheses. And I'll subtract these two. Um, this is, if I don't put these parentheses around, then really I'm just subtracting x squared and I'm adding a negative 4x and I'm adding a, a negative 5. Hopefully you understand that, but what I, what I need to do is put the parentheses around it and then distribute the negative to each of the three terms that I have. Um, that guarantees that I'm subtracting all three of those terms, which is, makes up g of x. All right, so I'll, just, I'll distribute that and then I'll just combine like terms. So that minus sign just changes all of these signs. We've done this before. It's very, very simple. And now I'm going to go look for like terms. Remember, like terms are terms that have the same variable with the same exponent. So I don't have any like terms for uh, 2x cubed because there are no more x cubes. Sorry, negative 2x cubed. And then... I'm looking for an x squared, because I'm just going to write it in standard form. So there are no other like terms for the x squared. So that's done. That's done. Uh, the 3x and the 4x, I add those together, because those are like terms, plus 7x. They're both positive. And then I have negative 4 and positive 5. Those are just regular numbers, so I combine those. And that gives me positive 1. Negative 4 plus 5 is 1. So, there we have it. f minus g of x equals that polynomial. It's a cubic uh, polynomial. And uh, that's what we get. That's all we're doing. That's it. That's as complicated as it gets. Uh, for, for today, at least. The only difference when you have addition is uh, that you just add the two. You don't have to distribute any negatives like we did here. So there you go. Let's do one more example where we actually evaluate this at some number. So let's let's take a look at that. Okay, on this one, uh, it says find g minus f of 10. So really, all we're going to do is the same thing that we did above, uh, but then we're going to plug in 10. There's a couple of different ways you could do this, but I'll, I'll mention the other way after this. So the first thing I'm going to do is find g minus f of x, and then I'll plug stuff in. So let's, let's see what that is. Remember, it's g minus f, so I have to start with this one. And I am subtracting, so I get minus parentheses 4x plus 4. So then I have my, um, my subtraction, my parentheses, everything's good. I can distribute and continue on. 
So what do we have? 3x minus 3, and then I'll combine like terms. Here, those two combined, 3x minus 4x, that's negative x, or negative 1x. And then negative 3 and negative 4 make negative 7, because they're both the same sign. So, now all I'm going to do is plug in 10. So I can plug in 10 here. Uh, let's see what happens. So now this is going to be 10. So this changes to 10. So I get negative 10 minus 7. And this gives me negative 17. So that's my answer on this one. Uh, another way to do this could be to first plug in 10. You could plug in 10 to this. Uh, maybe this is easier. You can do it in your head a little bit more easily. Uh, but you could plug in 10 here. Because remember, if we... Let's actually, let's back it up a little bit. I can rewrite this as... Where is it? As this, right? So why don't I do that? This is an alternative method. I could, uh, I could do g of 10 minus f of... 10. Well, g of 10, that's just what I get when I plug in 10 there. So that would be 40 plus 4. That's 44. Nope, I plugged it into f. That would be this one. So that would be 30 minus 3 is 27. And then plug in 10 to that. That would be 40 plus 4 is 44. And what do you know? 27 minus 44 is still negative 17. So that's another way to do it. Um, whichever one you're more comfortable with. I feel like when, you have, when you're evaluating stuff, it's easier to plug it in first and then go from there. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes it, 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 you get a simpler function. Um, so there you go. That's it for this. Have a good day. I'm blue. blue oh, all right. Bye.